Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a Minecraft Java Edition server using your Synology NAS and Docker. We will be setting up a Minecraft server using version 1.19 of Minecraft and I'll show you how to set it up easily. All the tools I'll use will be linked in the description below. If you want to thank me for this tutorial, you can buy me a coffee using the link in the description. Anyway, on to the tutorial. To start off, in order to increase the security of the server, we'll be setting up a limited access user that will only have access to Docker. You'll want to install an SSH application called PuTTY, which I'll link in the description. You can see what PuTTY looks like on the window to the right of the screen. First, we're going to go to our NAS and click on our control panel. Then, we're going to click on user and group. Click create and give an easy identifiable name to this user, like Docker Limited. Then, you're going to want to type in a strong password in order to secure this account. And then disallow the user to change the account password. Then click on next. From here, you're going to want to make sure that only the users group is selected. And click on next. Now, you're going to disallow access to all the folders except the folder that Docker is located in. Mine is called Docker. From here, user quota will be left at default. And you're going to want to deny all application permissions. Then, at the user speed limit, you're going to want to leave default. Once you get to the confirm settings page, you're going to want to double check your work to make sure everything is put in properly. And hit done. Now, you're going to want to go to your terminal and SMMP page and enable SSH service if it's not already enabled. The default port will be 22, but in order to increase security, you're going to want to change it to something else. I just used 69. Now, we're going to transition over to PuTTY and type in our server's IP address. If you don't know our, your server's IP address, pause the video and look up online how to find the IP address. Mine is 192.168.1.14 and I'm going to use the port I input earlier. Click open Then it's going to ask you to log in. From here you're going to want to log in as your main account that you've been using. In this case mine is admin. And then it's going to want to type in your password. you won't see the password fill in as you're typing. From here, you're going to want to go here and type ID space and the name of the user you just created, in this case Docker Limited, and save the information that it spits out at you. In this case, the UID is 1034, so I'm going to type that here. The GID is 100, and the group ID is 100. You can close out PuTTY, we won't be needing it again. Now we're going to grab the Docker container for the server. Go to your Docker app and click on Registry. From here, you're going to want to go to the search bar and type in Minecraft. The first result you should see is ITZG Minecraft Server. If you don't, I'll include a link to it in the description. Double click on this. Now it's going to ask you to choose your tag. In our instance we can use latest, but if you're using an older version of Minecraft that requires a different version of Java, you're going to want to consult the GitHub page to determine what Java application you need. Again, we're just going to choose latest. Once that's downloaded, it's going to pop up in your image repository. You'll know when it's done downloading when you get a notification from your Synology NAS saying it is. Then we're going to double click on it, and this is where you start setting up the server. For your network options, you're going to want to use the same network as Docker Host. Click that little bubble there, go to next. And then you're going to put in your general settings. You can change the container name to whatever you want, 
you can make it Minecraft version 1.19 or you know my server or whatever you want to do it's up to you I'm just gonna keep it at the default then you're gonna want to enable your resource limitations I use a Synology DS920 plus with 8 gigabytes of RAM and my main use for it is backups and some mild media streaming using Plex so I don't have a lot of stuff um, utilizing my CPU. So I can set my CPU priority to high. But depending on what Synology NAS you have and the amount of RAM that you have, uh, you'll have to adjust this accordingly. Since I don't need 8 gigabytes of memory dedicated to my server, I'll just set it to 4 gigabytes. Then you're going to want to enable or disable auto start. So whenever your NAS restarts or whenever the container crashes, Enabling this will automatically restart the container so that the server will pop back up, reducing the amount of downtime you have. I leave it off because I don't want to worry about boot loops and all that extra stuff. From here, you're going to want to go to your advanced settings. It's going to look very complicated, but it's very easy, I promise you. From here, you're going to want to type in a couple things. Where it says UID, you're going to want to type in the UID we gained when we were using PuTTY. In my case, it's 1034. And the GID, you're going to want to use the GID we also grabbed from PuTTY. In my case, it's 100. Now, you're going to want to change the type of server you're using. There's a bunch of different options. You have vanilla, bucket, spigot, paper, curse forge, fabric. Um, vanilla will just load up a very default version of a Minecraft server. However, I found that with my Synology NAS, it's a little uh, laggy, so I use a more optimized version of a Minecraft server called Paper. And you can do that as well. For the version type, we're going to go with latest. However, if you're watching this video at a later date where there are newer revisions of Minecraft, you're going to want to set it to the specific version you're using. In this case, 1.19 at the time of recording. In order for the Minecraft server to launch, you're going to want to set the EULA to true. Now we're almost done. What's next is we're going to want to add a variable and label it in all caps, max memory. Here you're going to want to specify how much memory the server has access to. Uh, in my case it's 4 gigabytes, but I'm just going to set it to 3 gigabytes. That way there's a little bit of uh, wiggle room. Now, again, depending on what kind of Synology NAS you have, this number is going to be different. Then you're going to add one more variable, and you're going to want to label it, again in all caps, JVM underscore XX underscore OPTS. I didn't put it in all caps, but you, you can. From here, we're going to want to copy this information that I'll include in the description and what this stuff does is it increases the performance of the server by um, adjusting things like how it loads chunks and stuff and you're going to want to put it in here exactly so I recommend copying and pasting it again I'll post it in the description alright double check make sure everything looks good and hit save and you're going to go next and add a folder this is where you're going to keep all the save data for your NAS, for your Minecraft server. So I've already done this, but what you're going to want to go to do is go to your Docker folder, whatever it's labeled, and create a new folder and label it Minecraft in all lowercase. I've already done that, so it's right there. Then when you're in your volume, add a folder, go to your Docker folder, and click on that folder and select it. You're going to want to set the mount path to backslash data and hit next. And then this is the summary page. Summary is going to explain to you everything you're about to do. So I would look over it just in case there's anything wrong. The memory limit's going to look a bit different than what you put in, but don't worry about that. Then it's going to ask you if you want to run this container after the wizard is finished. I'm going to click no and hit done. Now what it's done is if you go to your containers, 
you'll see that it's right there. I'm going to go to the server I've already set up, just for example purposes. We'll go to my details. And then I'm going to click start and go to the terminal. What it's going to do is it's going to show you everything it's doing as it's starting up. And it might take a while if you're doing a first time startup because it's got to load up all this new information that it's never used before. But once it's all done, it'll have a fully running Minecraft server. In order to log into it from outside the net your uh, local network, you're going to want to make sure you've properly set up your port forwarding permissions on your router and NAS. And you should be able to connect to the server easily, or your friends should be able to connect to the server easily. If you don't know how to port forward, I would suggest Googling it and looking up how to do that because every router is different and each one has its own finicky ways. As you can see here, my server is done loading in and I can do list and it shows that there's zero players online right now because I just started the server. If I go to my Minecraft, go to my multiplayer, I've already added my server to the uh, lists of servers but if I join it, you'll notice that everything is loaded in properly. I can access various different things. And there's no lag. Everything is working like you expect it to in a normal Minecraft server. Alright. That's about it. Now you know how to set up a Minecraft server using Synology's Docker on your Synology NAS. I hope you've got a lot of information from this video. If you like it, please like it. If you want to see more info stuff that I'm doing, you can subscribe. And if you want to support me so I can create more videos like this, you can buy me a coffee using the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.